Welcome to Crazy Nurse RN Hub, where learning becomes a tradition. Come, join me as we explore the multifaceted worlds of nursing. Hi there, students. My name is Crystal Merdukanes, and I am your research instructor. For today's topic, we have the validity and reliability. The term validity refers to the strength of a research design to produce accurate results, which is determined by examining internal validity, construct validity, and statistical conclusion validity. One method of evaluating the adequacy of research control mechanisms and overall research design is to access its internal and external validity. For the internal validity of the research design, this refers to the extent to which it can be concluded that the independent variable is truly responsible for observed effects rather than the uncontrolled extraneous variables. There are threats to internal validity. We have history, selection, maturation, testing effects, instrumentation, and lastly, mortality. First, let's have history. This refers to the occurrence of external events that take place concurrently with the independent variable that can affect the dependent variables of the interest. For example, suppose you are studying the effect of a reproductive health program for pregnant women consisting of better nutrition and smoking cessation on infant birth weight. This would run for nine months. Now, before the nine months are over, a TV program about nutrition and smoking was aired. The resulting infant birth weight of your subjects might be affected by this program and it becomes impossible to distinguish where the effects came from, your program or the television. Next is selection. When the groups are not assigned randomly to groups, there are possibilities that the groups are non-equivalent. If the groups are non-equivalent, the researcher is faced with the possibility that any group difference or the dependent variable is the result of the initial differences rather than the effect of the independent variable. Another one is maturation. It refers to the processes occurring within the subjects during the course of the study as a result of an intervention. For example, a researcher is comparing the effects of a guava leaf and mango leaf on the healing process of children's wounds. Wound healing can occur with little or no medical intervention. This aspect should be taken into consideration by the researcher. Another one is testing effects. Taking a pretest on a certain topic could affect the performance to be tested in the post-test. For example, you want to find out the effect of your health teaching about population to community folk in a barangay. You give a pretest and then after a week you give your health teaching session on pollution. After this, you give a post-test the same as the pretest. The problem is that the first questionnaire might have sensitized the participants if no control group was used. Using a control group could help distinguish the real effects of the teaching sessions on the two participating groups. Next is instrumentation. The researcher's measuring tool may yield inaccurate results. For example, your study wants to measure stress level before and after a stress buster program. But you use two different programs, one before and one after the actual program sessions. You certainly will yield two different results. 
And lastly, we have mortality. It refers to the loss of subjects during the course of the study due to the lack of interest, health, or non-return of questionnaire. This attrition rate or dropping out of the study is of concern if the rate exceeds 20% or one-fifth of your questionnaires. Now let's proceed to external validity of the research design. This refers to the generalizability of the research findings to other settings or samples. If an intervention under investigation is found to be successful, others will want to adopt it. However, there are threats to external validity. First, we have the Hawthorne effect, novelty effect, interaction of history and treatment effect, we also have experimenter effect, and lastly, the measurement effect. First, let's have the Hawthorne effect. It refers to the change in behavior of the subjects because they are aware of their participation in a study. Next, we have the novelty effect. When a treatment is new, subjects and research agents alike might alter their behavior in a variety of ways, positively or negatively. Next, we have interaction of history and treatment effect. The results may reflect the impact of treatment and some other events external to the study. For example, if a dietary intervention for people with high cholesterol was being implemented shortly after extensive medical campaign on the use of rice bran to reduce cholesterol, the result revealed would be non-conclusive for the researchers' dietary interventions. Another one is experimenter effects. It has something to do with the characteristics of the researcher having an effect on the participants. If this is the case, any observed relationships in the original study might be difficult to replicate in a more neutral situation. And lastly, we have measurement effect. Collecting a considerable amount of data such as background data, pretest information, etc., may make it difficult to apply results to another group of people. So, in most quantitative studies, it is extremely important to control the effects of extraneous variables. This becomes a major function of research design assessed through structured quantitative procedures. Now let's proceed to reliability. It refers to whether or not you get the same answer by using an instrument to measure something more than once. In simple terms, research reliability is the degree to which research method produces stable and consistent results. A specific measure is considered to be reliable if its application on the same object of measurement number of times produces the same results. So we have categories of reliability. We have the test-retest reliability. We also have the parallel forms reliability and inter-rater reliability. First, let's discuss test-retest reliability. It relates to the measure of reliability that has been obtained by conducting the same test more than one time over a period of time with the participation of the same sample group. For example, employees of ABC company may be asked to complete the same questionnaire about employee job satisfaction two times with an interval of one week so that test results can be compared to assess stability of scores. Another one is parallel form of reliability. 
it relates to a measure that is obtained by conducting assessment of the same phenomena with the participation of the same sample group via more than one assessment method. For example, the levels of employee satisfaction of ABC company may be assessed with questionnaires, in-depth interviews, and focus groups and results can be compared. Lastly, we have inter-rater reliability. It relates to the measure of sets of results obtained by different assessors using same methods. Benefits and importance of assessing inter-rater reliability can be explained by referring to subjectivity of assessments. For example, levels of employee motivation at ABC company can be assessed using observation method by two different assessors, and inter-rater reliability relates to the extent of differences between the two assessments. I believe that ends our lecture on validity and reliability. If you think this lecture video helped you, you may click the like and share button and spread good vibes. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more informative and interesting lecture videos. This has been Crazy Nurse RN. Have a nice day and see you on my next video. Goodbye!